what one vision, what one memory of these two days of peace in the heart of the city would you be taking away? With there you? are two memories, and one of the memories is that I heard a man talk talk about the birthing images of God. And although as a feminist theologian, I've used those images and I've heard women talk about them. I've never heard a man talk about it like that. And secondly, I think is about space and the, uh, space for peace. Um, the the model that we used on last night for in St John's was one that I've tried in Winchester Cathedral for five years, um, but I wasn't at all sure whether it could be moved. And in a sense, Winchester is a very different place from the East End. I know the East End not very well, but I live in Tooting, which is not unlike it in terms of multiculturalism. But um, the, I know the schools and, and that the, all of the, the, the tensions and had liaised with Alan Green about all the tensions following the murder of Drummer Rigby. And I knew the English Defence League and all of those things that were around. We didn't have much time to get such an elaborate event together. And the fact that it could be done is what I will take, take away. That it was possible to do it. Um, maybe with more insecurity than we've ever done it before. But I suppose I will take away that what I've said many times, which is if one, in, one intention, you make the intention as clear as you possibly can and then you use prayer that in a sense that will overcome a variety of shortcomings. And is there an experience of peace that you can take with you from this time that we've spent together that will help you embed peace more deeply within yourself and, and in the work that you do? It's a very interesting one because I think um, that for all sorts of very good reasons confidence in what I do is not something that comes easily to me. I can easily doubt what I do, I can easily destroy what I do, not in doing it, but after it for myself. Um, I didn't join in the plates nothing yesterday because I was in a sort of turmoil about what was going to happen in the evening and how much energy the evening was going to take and I didn't have enough to engage fully with the pilgrimage and to do the evening. So I know that, you know, at 70 my, I haven't got unlimited supplies of energy, um, although the Holy Spirit can overcome again some of those things. but. I think the plate I smashed was for self-doubt, really, and that, that I have got a lot of experience of life and that I can now, at my age, put those experiences together to make something which is new and innovative, which is risk-taking, which can speak to areas which are fractured. So if you're asking me about an inner question, it's trying to believe that I really am what I want to be as a Christian priest, as a priest, a channel of, of, of God's love, God's spirit, of that divine peace, and that, that I don't need to doubt that as often as I have doubted it. Um, and, and that, you know, that, that not to doubt it is not arrogance, because that's always the fear, but to be able to allow that spirit to happen and simply to say thank you, and then when the day is over, to say thank you and not, well, you could have done this and you could have done that, and that wasn't very good, and you might have done it that way, and if only you trusted God more, you would have got it, done it better, which is the traditional position that I've been in. So to be able to live with the peace in some way without destroying it, I think, which an inner sort of self-critic is extraordinarily adept at, really. Um, 
which is obviously from childhood, you know, and I mean, you know, a, a mother who had a wonderful look that I remember very clearly. You may think you're doing well now, dear, but you just wait till we get home, you know, uh, that inner voice. So I think I shall take that away, as I shall the first of the little children coming up with their candle uh, through the middle of all of that. And the moment when the Imam realized that he didn't keep, need to keep doing a, a set prayer, but actually could join in what was going on. Um, and those moments, um, I think, were very important and ones that and I think also the Imam, many people have mentioned, the Imam chanting the call to prayer under the crucifix and a Christian pulpit, when in many ways it is Muslim men of integrity who are the victims of crucifixion in society today. So by putting the crucified Christ behind the Imam, the truth of what Islamophobia is doing for the Islamic community, came in some way visible for everybody there um, and, and that I think is very important and uh, so those are particular images from this notion here um, you know but also the internal learning is one step I think further on so uh, thank you very much for um, allowing to be part of that allowing me to say those things